box situation where you need to update your checkbook uh, with, a, with an amount that was deposited to your account, but you don't get a list of what actually cleared these bills are and later. And then you would use the cleared unused receipts to flag all of those. And, it, and, I'll, and I'll go through one and you'll see the differences. Those are kind of typical or standard uses for those different types. Um, so if I go to my savings account, this is our new one. I don't remember what date I put that one. So. Mm. If I had some customer transactions, the customer receipts, you'd see those all on the bottom as well. So I would just select it, and here's my deposit total at the very bottom. So that's the amount that's going to affect, affect this checkbook at this point in time. So I'm going to post that. And then let's do one with multiple so you can kind of see the different options that you have here. And you don't need a description. That's just that's optional. But you've got, what do I want to see here? What kind of receipts do I want to see? You may get a whole bunch of credit card transactions, and you want to limit what you're seeing in the window below. So you can restrict it by uh, receipt type here. I can also restrict the date range to limit what I'm seeing in the window here. Um, let's just look through over in 20. Well, we've got some 2014 stuff there. Um, let's do the Fabricam is in the future. And you can also restrict what currency you want to see. So if you're dealing with multi-currency, you can use that. So once I've put my, re my restrictions, I hit redisplay, and obviously I don't have anything that fits that description. But any time I change those, I have to hit redisplay to refresh what's in the bottom. Um, I can show in high details here. If you see, I'm, I'm looking at the three lines. So I can show and hide those. Make it easier on me. If I restricted it just to a day, I can, if, if I've got just a day's worth of deposits in here, I could just click mark all and it would mark everything I've got selected. I can also unmark all. But if I change my range for some reason, my restriction, I just hit enter and saved it. So you're going to see me reopening it. Let's grab these five here. Notice I still have a total down in the bottom. and I hit my call, it's adding, so it's accumulating. So even though I don't see those other two that I marked before, they're included on this deposit. So try not to let that confuse you. I've seen that happen before, and they're, they can't figure out why they're looking at you know, an amount here, but my total is different. So you may have previously marked something. While we've got that marked, the other option in this window, if you go into the expansion by the deposit amount, you can um, you can divide up your currency. I mean, some of this, this obviously the fifty cents 
if it was cash that you received. In this case, it's a check, so probably not. Um, well, they're all checks. If I had some cash in here, the currency is zero, I could break it up between how much was actual dollars and how many were cents. This really is only going to affect your deposit worksheet if you use those. It will, when you post this, it's going to print out a worksheet. Some people will put it with their daily deposit to show what's been deposited. And it will just match your deposit slip that you took to the bank. It's just breaking up the currency. Um, I can also print it before I post just to see what I've got on it. This is what the worksheet looks like. List everything that I've flagged and breaks it down. Pretty simple. Okay, I'm just going to unmark those and not post those at this time. And I'm if I hit delete, I'm not really deleting any anything in anything that I've marked or any receipts, I'm just deleting the deposit that I started to work on and I'm starting over. No, it goes to your checkbook balance. Whenever you post the receipt, those update the general ledger. And then the receipts come into this window for me to group and then I throw what depending on my selection, that amount goes to the checkbook. We have receipts that go to general ledger already. Yeah, re rece receipts, updates, general ledger as you post them to the customer. Uh, yeah. So yeah. we've got our cash in the jail. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you post, post these and it posts. It doesn't update the GL again. You already updated it with the receipt. When you're posting this deposit, what you're posting is the, the amount on the bottom of the window, my deposit amount for that day, $50,000. I'm posting it to the checkbook balance, and you're going to see a line item in that checkbook when you go to reconcile for $50,000 versus all the receipts add to it. You have to re yeah, you have to group the receipt. If you if you opened up this window, uh -huh. if you're using an integration manager to bring in a whole bunch of cash receipts, uh -huh. and then you come into this window and look at that checkbook that you're bringing all those re individual receipts into, uh -huh. you're going to uh -huh. see them all listed here. They're not bringing them into it. It sounds like they're bringing them directly to the general. So if you're doing a direct to the general ledger yeah. entry, yeah. it does not write back. Bankrupt. Okay, but well, what what you can do, okay, um, is the deposit without receipt, because mm -hmm. we're not going to have any receipts in here to group up, and it's just an amount. Okay, that's okay. so I mean, you could just put the deposit for that day in here, right? And that was my next one. <laughs> That's not what answers your question. <laughs> but it's a good question. And so like our savings, the new one that I sent up, I might this might be one of my deposits in transit. It's not gonna update my general ledger. But it's gonna book that that deposit into my checkbook and update its balance. Okay, so I'm going to look at 
clear unused receipts. And I'm not sure what's in some of these. I'm just going to look if we can open them. I need to see nothing there. I'm gonna find something to mess with. Of course, I can break my system and reinstall it. No problem. Okay, so um, if you've never reconciled in GP, but you've been using Great Plains forever and ever, and all these cash receipts that you've entered on customers or whatnot are flowing into bankrupt because you have the module registered. They're all going to be hanging in here. And using cleared on receipts, you'll be able to flag all these, you know, from history and get them out of here, I guess you could say. It's a way to clear them out of your window. And if you notice, it's zero. And it's just it's going to put over into your bank rack a deposit of zero because it maintains these in history. If I look at that deposit of zero, I can click and drill down and see all the receipts I cleared. It's just not going to update the checklist balance. So, so this so means if you had adjusted your checkbook somehow already and you had yeah. a deposit with that receipt, then oh, it should have been this receipt? Yeah, yeah. So the two so kind of... Your checkbook balance... You know, exactly. It's, it's all these things are supposed to hit it and it hasn't. Yeah. But you're, you somehow you, you get it in some other way. Right. So if even if for some reason I do a deposit without receipt, and then my receipt shows up later, that was part of that de deposit, I can clear that receipt out of the list. But I can also use this as a function to clear out history if I'm starting anew, and there's been stuff going in there. These are good questions. I'm glad you guys are bringing these up. Okay. Um, normally I just post that. Oh, I will. So I can show you what it looks like. So now that I'm closing my window, I'm going to get my posting journals of all the work that I did while I was in there. So it functions different than batches. Okay. Now let's talk just really briefly about the miscellaneous check uh, before we break for lunch. And it should be coming up shortly. Um, this was new in version 10. Uh, you can now do a miscellaneous check just directly from your checkbook. It does not have to be vendor related. So I don't have to create a vendor, enter an invoice, and cut a check for um, donuts for a meeting. <laughs> you know? Um, if, it, if it doesn't need to be 1099 at the end of the year, you know, just miscellaneous charges that come through your door and you just need to cut a check, you can do it in the miscellaneous check. Um, so the detail will remain in the checkbook as far as history and drill down and that kind of thing, but it's just not going to be tracked on a vendor. So this is just the way to do a miscellaneous check out of your checkbook. And so that could be when you actually print or one that's yeah. out of your drawer and hand wrist wrote and well, still so you, you, yeah. you answer it without printing. Yeah, you could print it to the screen. Sure. Mm -hmm. But you can use the winter stock check as well. Yep. It, yep. It, fo it follows all the same rules as your AP check. So that's pretty handy. So I'll just um, pick up town. And see, here's my check format right there. So whichever one I've got defaulted.